Hey everybody, it's Mitch, and welcome to my next video. Today, we are going to be talking about the ninja from Dungeons & Dragons 3.5. Here in the complete adventure. Yeah, our boy the ninja there. So, what we're going to be talking about today is first we're going to be talking about what is the ninja. Then we're going to talk about how you would roleplay as a ninja. Then we're going to talk about what you get as a ninja. And finally, we're going to talk about how good the ninja is and how you might use it in a build. So, let's get started. All right, first off, what is the ninja? Well, as you're probably aware, ninjas are people of the shadows. They hide in the shadows, ready to strike anyone that dares cross their path. These ninja can vary greatly. Some are loyal guards to their masters. Others are mercenaries for hire. They can really be just about anything, although they do tend towards chaos over law that they are just as likely to be good as they are evil. Ninja are based off of, well, ninja from Japan, I think. I don't think there were ninja in other places, but maybe other Eastern Asian countries had them, but I know for sure Japan did. So that's the inspiration for the ninja in the game. But they're just small tr clans or tribes of ninja that just hide in the shadows secretly doing their business. All right, so that's what a ninja is fairly self-explanatory. I think most people know what a ninja is. So let's talk about how you would role play as a ninja. Ninja very much prefer their stealth. So because they prefer stealth, they're going to prefer classes that also prefer stealth, like rangers and scouts and rogues. They're going to prefer these classes because they can kind of relate to them. These are very stealthy classes. They're not so big on like barbarians. Although they do appreciate clerics because, you know, healing is always nice. So, and I think druids as well for that same reason. But uh, if you're playing as a ninja, you're likely from a small clan. Not necessarily. Maybe you went to a school with a lot of other ninja. Or maybe you were trained by a lone master. There's a lot of different options. These are things to consider when you're making your character and how you're going to roleplay your ninja. That's more or less how to play and they're fairly simple. So let's talk about what they get, because they get a lot. First off, D6 hit dice, not bad. They get six plus int skills, which is pretty good. Their skill list is quite good, although notably it does not have used magic device, which Rogue does. In terms of weapon and armor proficiency, they don't get any armor proficiencies, but they're proficient with all simple weapons, as well as a handful of other weapons. The crossbow, the kama, the kukri, the nunchaka, the sai, the short bow, the short sword, the shuriken, and the singham. I have no idea if I pronounced that last one right. Several standard ones, as well as some less standard ones, make sense for ninja. I mean, shuriken, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Ninja also get a average base attack bonus, so decent. They get a good reflex save, but a bad fortitude and will save, which is a little unfortunate. They're going to get an AC bonus, very similar to that of the monk. It's going to be based off of their wisdom score, and it will scale as they level up. And there's a chart. I don't know if it's the exact same as the monk's, but it's pretty similar. It specifically says it doesn't stack with the monk's, although the wisdom part is probably the only part that doesn't stack. The flat parts probably do, but... Rules is written, they, they does say they don't, but I suspect they only intended it to be the wisdom not doubling up. They also get key power, so they get key points at every other level. So their key points is going to be equal to half their uh, ninja level, minimum one, uh, plus their wisdom. So half the level, minimum one, plus level. It doesn't say whether it's up or down. My, I, I honestly don't know whether it rounds up or down on that, but... It's half plus level, so yeah. Uh, they also get something called Sudden Strike, which is very similar to Sneak Attack. The big difference is that unlike with Sneak Attack, where you can use it when you're flanking with an opponent, you can't use Sudden Strike when flanking. They have to have their dexterity denied to them. It doesn't work when flanking, so there's that downside. But otherwise, it's pretty much exactly the same thing as Sneak Attack that rogues get and you get them at the same levels every odd level you get it so 
Not bad. Uh, they also get trap finding exactly the same as a rogue does. Uh, they get something called ghost step. So it's second level that they can use a key point in order to become invisible for a round. And at 10th level, they can, instead of becoming invisible, go at the real for a round. Definitely kind of cool that they could use that. Uh, the books suggest that they could use it to like phase through a wall and kill somebody as they pop out the other side. Could be interesting. Fourth level, they get great leap, which basically just means that Anytime they're not wearing armor, they can jump as if they got a running start and have the run feet. Even if they're doing a standing jump and don't have the run feet. So they get all the bonuses from that. So quite nice, actually. Very, very good jumpers. Um, and they also get acrobatics at 6th level. So they get plus 2 to climb, jump, and tumble checks. Uh, I think that's similar to a feat, but... That's cool that they get that, and I think it would stack with similar feats. Then also at 6th level, they gain an ability called Key Dodge, which lets them spend a key point in order to attempt to dodge attacks. So they do that as a swift action, and then until the start of their next turn, they have 20% concealment. And this actually does go up to 50% concealment at 18th level, so it's going to be a while. Oh, and one thing that I forgot to mention is... Whenever a ninja has at least one key point remaining, they get a plus two to their will save. So that's a thing. Then at seventh level, ninjas get speed climb, which lets it so that as long as they start and end their turn on a flat surface, they can climb at their normal move speed without any penalties. They do need to have at least one free hand to do it, but that's not too terrible. At eighth level, they get ghost strike, so they can use a key point and a move action in order to be able to strike things on the ethereal plane so decent i guess i mean it's basically ghost touch but it requires a fixed resource and a move action and it only lasts a turn so not the best there's definitely better ways to get the same thing and have it last longer oh one thing that i missed earlier was poison use so they can apply poison to weapons without any risk of hurting themselves i think that's at third level that they get that yeah third level and then at ninth level they get improved poison use which lets them apply poison to a weapon as a move action. Not sure how often you're going to be wanting to apply poison in the middle of combat, but if you ever do, being able to do it as a move action as opposed to doing it as a standard action is kind of big. So there's that. At 12th level, they get evasion. Evasion's really good, but it's not till 12th level. Rogues and monks both get that at second level. So having to go that many levels to get it is a lot. Now at 14th level, they get something called Ghost Mind. Now Ghost Mind's actually quite good. What it does is it lets you resist being scried on by any magic of the scrying school. They'll have to make a caster level check in order to scry on you. Otherwise, they'll just won't see you when they do the scrying. You're just invisible in the scry. So that'll be kind of cool. And the caster level check, the DC is actually 20 plus your class level, which is insane. That's going to make it so that somebody that's your level, even if they're rolling a nat 20, they're still like, well, I guess if they roll a nat 20, they succeed at you're the same level because, you know, if it, it, if it meets, it beats. So that would work. But they literally have to roll a nat 20 if they're the same level. So very, very accurate. And even if they're like 10 levels higher than you, there's still only a 55% chance it'll work. You know, it'll work more often than not, but 10 levels higher and they're still struggling to pull it off. So that's impressive. Now, granted, it's a little less extreme than that because there are ways to slightly boost your caster level above your character level. But even then, it's going from, I mean, you have to roll maybe a 17 on the die to actually see them, which is still not very likely, so still quite good. At 16th level, they get Ghost Sight, so they can see the Ethereal Plane normally, so as well as Invisibility, so they can see anything on the Ethereal Plane as well as Invisible Creatures as if they weren't Invisible or Ethereal. I mean, I think they can distinguish it, but at the same time, but the point is, they can see it as if, if as easily as they can see things that are not invisible or on the ethereal plane. So that's kind of cool. That's just a permanent thing they get at 16th level. And as I was saying, they get greater key dodge at 18th level. And finally, at 20th level, they get Ghost Walk. Now, Ghost Walk 
will let them be able to go into the ethereal plane for a good amount of time which can be quite useful and you can split it up as well so not bad at all so that's what the ninja gets let's talk about how good the ninja is well it's sudden strike is worse than sneak attack it's just that's just strictly the case there's nothing it has that's better than sneak attack now it's almost as good it as effectively the exact same other than the fact that you can't do it when flanking with an ally which is often when you're going to be using sneak attack so the one of the easiest ways to get sneak attack you can't do but aside from that you can it is strictly worse than sneak attack they do get the monk's ac bonus though which is nice and they do get poison use and some other cool stuff but I do think they're a little worse than the rogue overall, but still pretty solid and can be quite useful. If you wanted to do like a divine roguish, I think ninja might be your better option since, you know, it, this actually has wisdom synergy and most divine casting is wisdom based. So a divine roguish, you'd probably be better off doing a divine caster ninja and then some prestige class that advances both of them. That could actually be pretty solid. And there's a few of those. In Complete Adventure, there's a couple that could potentially work. Dagger Spell Shaper, I guess, if you wanted to go Druid. And then there was one other one. I forget the name off the top of my head. Uh, it was another one of the organization ones. There, you could also just go straight Ninja. I mean, they get some decent stuff, like the ability not to be scryed on is pretty cool and their ghost step abilities are pretty nice I and mean, if you're going to be going for that kind of stuff you might as well just go straight ninja at that point you could i guess instead take like a little bit of that and then or like mostly ninja and then maybe you know switch it up with a little bit of sword sage at the end that could potentially work as well also an option maybe even mix it shadow sun ninja i think is what it's called that could potentially work well. I mean, thematically it works. I mean, it is a ninja. So, yeah, just some options on things that you could potentially do. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I always love hearing from you. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. Maybe subscribe to the channel for more D&D 3.5 content because I do one of these on every single class, race, and prestige class in Dungeons & Dragons 3.5. So don't miss out on that. Also down in the description below, there is a link to my Discord as well as to my Twitch. So check those out. But anyways, as always, I'm Mitch. I'm going to be seeing you.